what did you find about yourself when you hit a limit, whether it be mentally or physically, spiritually? What do you tell yourself when you hit those type of limits and you're going to a spot in an area in your life you've never been before? What's going on in your head? Yeah, well, I would say most of the time those limits are artificial limits. I think you, you, have, two, you have two things. You either have limits or you have boundaries, right? Boundaries will protect us. Limits will keep us from becoming what we're supposed to become. And so if you have the right mindset, a, a growth mindset, as Carol Dweck talks about in her book, Growth Mindset, if you have the right mindset around it, you can get to, you know, something that's hard for you and realize that I can just grow in my capacity. My kind of like thought process philosophy on strength, right? Because like you, you strength is an, an indicator of what your limits are. The way that I like to think about strength and as someone who speaks all the time and teaches, like you'll appreciate this. I was having a moment in my life, this was a couple years ago where I was like, I had a speaking thing, and then I had a coaching thing, and then I had a business coaching thing. I, just, I had a, a crazy week, and this had all stacked up together. And I was like, man, I'm going to have to be so on this week. And I was starting to let that like wear me out. And you know that, that yeah. thought process, that phrase, like, i got to be on. And what I said to myself was, well, I, I was having a moment. I said, you know what? I need to quit being on. Why don't I just raise the level of my character, raise the level of my intensity, raise the level of my strength to where this is my baseline, it's right? Because you can't, you are. yeah, not just going up and down all the time, trying to be on in my thought process on strength, right? And this is an indicator of limits. Strength isn't about what you can pick up in a moment. Strength is about what you don't have to put down, right? Because as men, mm. we, we go through life and we're continually having to carry new weights, but these are, these are good weights, right? The weight of fatherhood, the weight of being a husband, the weight of being a business owner. The weights that I carry in my life today, if you had just put all this on top of me five years ago, it would have crushed me, right? Like I, I'm, I went through SEAL training, but I can tell you, and I, and I was a SEAL for, I, I'd served six years, but I can tell you the, the strength and the way that I think now, so much greater than who I was even then. Yeah. Because, so just to come back and answer your question, we have limits, but that's just something for us to grow through, right? So, so in other words, it's self-imposed. Yeah. A lot of these are self-imposed. Amazing. You, you face a limit. It's like, okay, this is an area where I need to improve. Like, like who this is an area where I need to learn. Yeah. yeah, but most of the time they're artificial limits, yeah. right? Or, but if it is, a, if it is a, a, a strength limit, right? Okay, I can't pick up 400 pounds yet. I can pick up 300. I'll work my way to 400. Was there like a physical limit? Because that's the easiest way to see you push past the limits. The easiest to physically see it because you're experiencing it. In my, my, my experience. Uh, for, me, for me, it was my first ever five mile run. Yeah. Like I've never ran, you know, I was, I was a hundred yard dash guy. I was a football guy in 200 yards. Me too. Yeah, right? I, had to, I had to transition from being a 400 runner to right. a, a distance runner. For miles? Like, and I said, what are we going to do? Last mile, last, last, it's the motivation run. Yeah. How long is it? Five miles. I've never ran five miles before. <laughs> motivation run. Right. <laughs> and next year, the whole battalion gets together. Up in the motor with the rise. Right. Everybody's yeah. singing cadence. You're just a jack. Next thing you know, you know, right. All right. Quick time. March from, from the double time. Like, all right. Platoon. Halt. When we're done, that was was that five miles? Like yeah, it was five miles. That was easy. So in other words, the self limitation of me seeing five miles and then being around the right brothers, that's willing to go through the run and sing canes along the way, yeah. and just inspire each other, made a large limitation. I thought just a hundred yard dash. It felt like a hundred yard dash. Let, let me talk. That you made me think of something else. This is a really powerful thing that that limits us. When I'm going through, when I went through SEAL training. Um, I had the opportunity to go back and work a little bit on the other side of Hell Week, right, where I'm not a student in Hell Week, but I'm helping facilitate Hell Week. I wasn't ever a BUDS instructor, but I got to help serve alongside them. And you talk to students who quit, right? Ask these students, hey, why did you quit, right? Because if you make it to Hell Week, the majority of the students that make it to Hell Week have the physical ability to complete the wow. training, right? But now we're going to test your character. You ask the ones who quit, why, why did you quit? And well, every single one of them, they'll give you an answer that sounds something like this. I just decided I don't want to do this anymore. So you're telling me, and this is, you know, for, for when I made it to Hell Week, it had been my dream for almost three years at that point. For most people, like I made the decision in November of 2009, I was in the Navy in June 2010. Like it was a rapid shift for me. Most people prepare for years to get a SEAL contract yeah. and all that. So most of the time, by the time a student is in Hell Week, five years, six years of my whole life has been Prep. preparing for this moment. Yeah. And you get to this difficult moment and you're telling me you just decided that you don't want to do it anymore. Ouch. Right? The, uh, the key word there is the first word, I. I. Talk to the students who make it. Why did you make it through training? How were you able to do that? And they'll say, they'll tell you something along the lines of, well, I just didn't want to let down my boat crew. 
I was thinking about my brother John next to me, and I didn't want to leave him behind. That's the right answer. All of them will give you an answer that's something that's not about them, <laughs> right? And this is this. Is, Come on, I get the opportunity sometimes to go work with businesses, and people will bring me in as a. Yeah. Motivational speaker, sure. which I tell them I'm, I'm not a motivational speaker, but I, I, hopefully what I can do is inspire you, but instead of motivate you, because motivation is cheap and it uh, it goes away as soon as I go away. Yeah. But when I'm talking with some of these businesses or these team leaders, and we're looking at why people you know don't want to give their best or don't want to give their all in, a question that I'll ask some of the business owners that'll make them start to think differently is how many Navy SEALs do you think died for a paycheck? Exactly. How many men in the military served uh-uh. and died so that their parents could, or their family could get the four hundred thousand dollars death benefit? Yeah. That's not why any yeah. of them did it. They did it because they believed in something that was more important than they are, yeah. right? So if you want to go beyond yourself in life, which you need to, right? Because you have to lead yourself yeah. in life. So why would you lead yourself if there's something that's no? If if all you care about is you. Yeah. But when there's something to you that's more important than you, you can lead yourself to a place that you would have never gone just for yourself. So in the same way that men will serve a country and die for their country, the same way that men can go beyond themselves is when you decide that there's something more important than life that you are. So just to bring that back to breaking limits, yeah. you'll break your limits just like a, you know, a mom ripping the door off of a car when her child of is course. stuck, yeah. right? You'll go beyond your limits when it's not for you, but when it's for something that's more important than you. That's profound. And I think that's the problem with America today. Yeah. It's because it's become I. Everything's about me. My, my pronoun. My feelings. Yeah. Right? My attention to me. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.